we have been running into uh, HPIB command trouble uh, trying to run the HPIB tape and uh, to help my friend Ansgar who is developing the program I uh, we went to the point where we had to look at the HPIB bus traces and I was going to show you two instruments that are part of my collection that are meant to do just that so this fellow over here is an HP 59401A uh, and because it has so little memory this must be a vintage 1970 one of the first instruments and actually when I got it uh, it had broken switches so I had to open it up so uh, it was uh, really neat to see how the inside is made to repair it um, it can record only 32 transactions and uh, it's a paddle machine so you toggle things bit by bit and it reads them back to you in octal of all things so as usual the uh, HP instruments of that vintage are beautifully made and uh, this one had two switches that were broken but to get to them is just a piece of cake the whole front panel just plugs out and this is how all front panels should be designed put it in there Plug it in. Done. Okay, it's all back together. And with its uh, new switches here, see it turns on, it does. And look at that. This is the instruction manual. Now, how cool is that? And then the other one. Uh, is an appendage uh, that uh, works on my uh, more modern HP um, logic analyzer and it's really neat it's a combination of what HP calls a probe interface uh, this is the 10269C and this accepts plug-in um, here is one for uh, uh, SCSI, uh, SCSI one bus um, and I haven't done enough mischief with uh, SCSI buses to need that one yet uh, or this one is uh, the serial and HPIB and uh, so that makes your connection really beautiful you don't absolutely need it partly for HPIB because you could do the same by just hooking probes to the HPIB bus directly but this one makes it very very clean uh, so you just plug in the pods to the places in the probe interface and you're basically done uh, so I've attached this guy over here, it sniffs the bus at the computer and this guy is attached directly to the HPIB over here. So we should be able to do dual sniffing. So here's an example of a configuration that doesn't work at all. Uh, so it should stop right away and we'll try to capture a trace of what's happening. Clunk. Stopped. See what happens. Stop. And here we go. So we have the full trace here. And it should tell us what kind of error happened. And uh, here is the bus analyzer in uh, data acquisition mode. I won't stop it now, but if I put it on halt. Um, it would let me inspect uh, what the 32 last transactions were in memory uh, and but probably the tape won't, wouldn't restart luckily experiment halt and so here you, you see <coughs> that's an unlisten actually and I do yeah, I should be able to there you go you have all the all the real 
in the recorded transactions. And then let's see if I put it back on first. No, yeah, it's still working. Uh, so that's the read mode. And so briefly, we're learning this uh, bus analyzer with me. Here, pedal switches for all the lines of the GPIV bus, 0 to 8, and then the control line from uh, memory up and down, and some different controls for the memory in talk or listen. Uh, so, let's uh, try to put a little sequence of commands in, so I made a cheat sheet because you have to paddle them in in octal. I tried to figure out uh, what a rewind command would be, so let's go put it in halt, clear memory, and then now we should be able to enter something if we put it in talk. That's correct, so let's go on memory zero. And we have to pedal an unlisten. So unlisten is a command, attention up, and then it goes two, seven, seven, two, seven, seven, attention. That's correct. <clears throat> then I have to make the tip, the listener, so that's attention two, four, one. There we go. Then I have to send it a rewind command, which is a composite command. So it's the tape command one for one, followed by a secondary. So secondary is not a command, <coughs> it's only one byte. So end of input, and it's byte <coughs> one five. Sorry, one five. Zero zero one five. Okay. Then for good measure, we're going to put a two seven seven and unlisten at the end. Also, I probably don't need it. Okay. And then we'll make the program stop on zero. So in order to do that, we put these at middle don't care. These are zero and compare on. So that will make it, should make it stop. Go back to zero and see if the little program works. No guarantee here. Uh, so it's online. I guess I just should put it on slow and do a start it works it did this little program and it sent it into rewind all right so this box uh, is tested to work in talk mod talk mode one more piece of vintage equipment that works again and I've printed out uh, one of the traces and I can Follow along more or less what's happening, the tape uh, initializing, rewinding, and it's all fine. And uh, it tries to read something, and uh, I think I've caught an error. Uh, it has an error right here, returns a 1, should return 0, and then it reads it, and it's a timing error. So I think we have already ferreted something that's uh, not right on our first trace. Uh, so I can uh, talk to Ansgar and see if we can correct the program and find out why we have a timing error here. So I think that's been useful.